Robert here again, fact-checking the stories that scare you. And this is about that uh, old pig swine flu pandemic thing where this, the press as usual have blown it all up as if we're about to have another pandemic in the middle of the COVID-19 one or something. Anyway, uh, this is the other uh, the other expert that Dr. Angela Rasmussen uh, has, has said to go and look for other details. So I thought I'd just quickly look at what he said. And, um, oh, this is going on blank for some reason. Probably. So here we go. So uh, he said, he, he's talking a little bit more about the details of the actual paper, which he says is um, in a, a PNAS has put it behind the paywall. I tried to have a look and I couldn't look. And um, so he talks a bit about it. He says that the paper reports on a project that looked at flu strains in pigs from 2011 to 2018. And the main finding is that a new version, a new genotype, a new version known as G4 emerged and by 2016, so it emerged before then, became the dominant strain in pigs. So that's the first thing, is it's not a new, new virus. It's been very common in pigs since 2016. And then also when it says dominant strain, it means in the sample population, which is just a small part and doesn't include the whole of China. It just, it's in, if you look at the details, it's in 10 provinces of China, a total of 29,000 nasal swabs from slaughtered pigs and and from farm pigs. So it's not, it's saying it's, it's, it's out of those, out of a total of about 30,000 pigs in 10 provinces, and it was a prevalent one. And the study finds that it is sufficiently different that human populations would not currently be immune if it started to spread. And there's a number of characteristics, I said yes, that could make it well suited to spreading in humans. Uh, it was by a recombination of a previous version and new one. However, uh, neither the two cases of it infecting humans, for sure, in the paper, and neither resulted in human-to-human -human transmission. And swine-to-human transmission is probably far more common. So that's 10% have the antibodies, but only two actually had the disease. And the rest were over it. So, uh, and this is uh, something that's been around since 2016, at least, and before then, but that's when it got very common in pigs in this particular part of China, in particular parts of China. So he said, I'll be facing the start of a double pandemic, COVID plus this novel influenza, not imminently. There is no evidence that it's circulating in humans despite five years of extensive exposure in China, very, very different from COVID-19, where as soon as it went to humans sometime in December, there was no evidence before then. If even, if such back, there was some rumor of it maybe being in November, but I, I don't know if that panned out. There's, there doesn't seem to be any evidence of COVID-19 earlier in the year. And it's been found in Italy in December, it wasn't in Italy in November, so it doesn't seem that these, these sewage samples in Italy didn't have it in November, only in December. So it's pretty clear that it's a, it's a new thing in COVID-19, whereas this has been around for five years and it's been very common in pigs in China for five years and then it's in human beings in those samples going back five years as well. No, do, uh, uh, yeah, and the antibodies. It's been sorry. It's been common in pigs for five years, and then doing this new study, uh, looking at the antibodies, and they find ten percent of the workers have it. And in all that time, of people working with pigs, with this very common for five years, it hasn't spread, and it hasn't become a pandemic. So it's not describing an imminent threat to the general public despite news outlets running headlines that suggest otherwise. 
The problem with the clickbait advertising model is that there are strong incentives to get you to click. And I, I showed you the BBC article in my very first, first of this, the third video. I just was very clickbait, a potential pandemic. In fact, let's just look at, uh, at some of the clickbait titles and compare it with what the experts are saying. This is likely to, so, so, to bring up the, the click, but there we are, Reuters. China study warns of new possible new pandemic virus from pigs. New swine flu with pandemic potential. Swine researchers warn of flu virus in pigs with human pandemic risk. And you know, if you go and look at the news, you know, it, it, it's clickbait. It's saying, go and click on this. It's very important. Whereas if it said, you know, we found another, uh, yet another swine flu virus like the ones we have every year in the United States as well, and it's been in pigs for five years, and and there's no sign yet of any human to human transmission after five years. And if they manage to summarize that in the title, who would click through? So that's the problem. You see all these ones? All saying pandemic. I, 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 I filtered to pandemic. Pick, um, pick virus. Let's do pick virus so I'm not actually filtering to pandemic. It's just spreading all the yes, essential hallmarks of the candidate pandemic virus. That's New York Times, so it's gone to the top with that snippet. And with 2009 pandemic viral genes, so they all they're having a pig flu virus, even nature has, has gone on it and saying it's got pandemic potential in the title. And nature can be a bit clickbait. This this be one of the dead stories rather than an, an actual nature article. Uh, you see, so all these clickbait titles. So I'm saying this to try and immunize you in a way. Again, and there you are, that's one five flu virus with pandemic potential found in China. So that's what they mean by clickbait. The people, and I know, because I've written articles for my Science 20 blog, you spent quite a long time trying to figure, and indeed for my blog post now, and for my YouTube titles, YouTube articles, I spent quite a bit of time fine-tuning the the title, but I'm very careful not to make it a scary title. It'd be very easy to make my videos much easier, much have many more people click on them by putting scary titles. But I write them to help people not be scared. So I'm very careful with my title to make it as as clicky as possible in the sense that you get interested and want to click through. But I try to make people interested by making it clear in the title that it is not what all the clickbait titles are saying and then the hope is at some point it appears way down the search results and someone who's called down that far clicks in and says oh here's someone saying it's not a pandemic and then clicking through so I optimize, I optimized my title in that way but they do spend a huge amount of time a huge amount of work on optimizing every single word in the title counts because the people generally come across it in Google News and so it, they really, they work in things like, you know, what is going to come at the very beginning of the title. You, you have these key words, flu virus pandemic potential China. So it's put one, two, three, four, five key words with three pad, padding words. And that's all. New strain, swine flu virus spreading, scientists. So you think about, you know, what are the words, how can you pack as many clicky words? into your title as possible to attract people to it to and the ones who do that swine flu strain human pandemic potential increasingly you see that's how these people think they they, they look for words that kind of bang bang away at you and, and make you alert and and those are the ones pick influenza virus pandemic potential even nature is doing it warning pig virus pandemic risk so the word risk is, is going to make you want to click more and warning is going to make you want to click more decimating Nigerian pigs that's a different story altogether but uh, you know so so that is what that is how they work so when you're reading these stories you see this click 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 so it's sort of like bang 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 you know you try emphasizing Scientists say new strain of swine flu virus. 
it's biting or um, flu virus with pandemic potential found in China because China is a big uh, trigger for lots of people now or um, you know Uh, well, I've done most of them, uh, most of the thing. Warning, new pig virus, because people are scared of pig virus, has pandemic risk. Pandemic risk. And that is really upping it up all the way through. Warning, pig virus, pandemic. And then hammer it home at the end, risk. So that's how these things impact on you. And try and notice that, how these, how these clickbait titles click. And then, and then maybe try and you know just be a little bit less scared of them, and start maybe understanding how they work and help immunise you slightly to the clickbait, and also help you to look down. And if someone has got a very clickbait title, then usually when you click through, it's very common that the article itself is exaggerating it to the max as well. Although, uh, and if it's got a a title that is very catchy but is not emphasizing the risk then that's more what you want to go for and you know more and more sober sources anyway uh, sadly nature is not really so sober as it all it's a bit big big sometimes uh, not as bad as the as the uh, mainstream media if you go, I, so I'll just go and look at that because it says show pandemic potential. This expert has said, you know, the potential should be emphasized. Uh, uh, so there's nothing, it doesn't really say much at all. It is summarizing the, summarizing the abstract. It just says to prevent an outbreak, it's crucial that the virus is kept in check in pigs and individuals who work closely with the animals are monitored. This, uh, that, uh, but that the nature ran it doesn't mean that it's a high quality paper, sadly, anymore. If it was actually published by nature, it would mean it's high quality, depending on which branch of nature it gets published in. Nature does do some low quality it's got some low quality news sections as well. Low quality, it's got one particular, I forget its name, but there's a bunch of nature that will publish almost anything. And I even published obviously fake photos where someone had taken little cells and copied them around on the picture and obviously faked it. There's a bit of a scandal about that a few years back. So, but the mainstream nature ones are, um, are high quality. But the news stories aren't that high quality, sadly. Anyway, stop now.